Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome to Rock Video Rental. I am Brandon and with me as always is Caleb and we are going to be talking about the Evil Dead today. But before we get to that, we're going to do like we always do and Caleb, what have you been watching? As always with you, except for last week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the rare. Occasion. Almost always. Yeah. Almost. Um. Yeah. So a little bit this week. So the... Uh, my wife was watching Blue Blood, so I caught some of those episodes, watching still some of that. But she watches on Hulu, and apparently, like, that stops at season 10, but I think they go up to season 14. So she was trying to find where she could watch it, but we'd have to get another streaming service, so we're probably going to wait on that. Um, So when she got done with that, I helped her kind of search through some other shows, and she started watching Justified. Okay. Um, which I think there's kind of like two different Justified shows, but it's the original one. And so she's been getting into that, and I've watched parts of some episodes. So that was uh, another decent, you know, law enforcement show. Nothing too crazy or special, but uh, outside of that, uh, Bob's Burgers just watching that and playing a lot of NCAA 25 football. So that's my Rock. list. Yeah. Same here. Um, I've been playing a fair amount of NCAA football. Um, <laughs> I've been watching some movies lately. I, I talked last week about how I started watching my cousin Vinny and I finished watching that and it was pretty good. So I feel like most people have probably seen that, but definitely check that out if you haven't. Uh, what else did I watch? I watched Dodgeball. It's been a while since I've seen that movie, and it's still pretty funny. It's got some stuff that hasn't aged the greatest, but all in all, it's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. uh, then I watched Napoleon Dynamite last night. Oh my gosh. Yeah, because I'm like, I remember the first time I watched this and I thought it was dumb. And the second time I watched it, I thought it was kind of funny. And then this time I watched it, it was still kind of dumb. Okay, hold on, hold on. Did you watch it the first time you watched it? Well, any time you watched it, were you watching it by yourself? No. Okay. Because the I had kind of a similar experience. Because the first time I watched it, I watched it by myself. And I was like, what the heck am I watching? <laughs> and then I watched it a second time with some of my friends and it was totally like, oh, you have to watch this with people because basically you talk like crap about the movie the whole time and just enjoy the stupidity. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know. First time I watched it, I watched it with a um, friend of mine in high school. But yeah. Rock. Yeah. Um. Other than those, oh, we started watching this show on Hulu called Little Fires Everywhere. And I'm still trying to make sense of everything that's going on in that. It's got Reese Witherspoon in it. Mm -hmm. And, like, she's like a richer woman. And she's got, like, this duplex that she runs out to this lady who was, like, living in her car with her daughter. And we only got, like, an episode and a half through it so still trying to figure out everything that's going on in that but man other than that that's pretty much it Rock. but I did watch The Evil Dead so we probably should talk about it The Evil Dead is from 1981 and is directed by Sam Raimi. Uh, the plot is, five friends travel to a cabin in the woods where they unknowingly release flesh-possessing demons. Of uh, the cast, we got Bruce Campbell as Ash Williams, uh, Eileen Sandweiss as Cheryl, sorry, Ellen Sandweiss as Cheryl, uh, Richard DeManicor as Scott, Betsy E. Baker as Linda, and Teresa Tilly as Shelley. I believe this is the third time I watched this. 
at least the third time I watched it all the way through. Because wow. I've seen bits and pieces of it before. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say that the other two times that I watched this, I didn't enjoy it all that much. Like, I thought it was just kind of okay, and that I enjoyed it a lot more this time around. Nice. It's kind of weird because it's usually considered a classic by most horror fans. And to me, I guess I thought it was a little overrated the first couple of times I saw it. Okay. Do you, do you know, like, was there something different that you noticed this time or like, uh, I think this time around, I, I kind of texted you when I was going into the movie, like I'm going to approach this just subjectively, you know, mm-hmm. I'm going to watch it like just as a film and see what I could pick up on it. And I will say what I really noticed this time was this uh, cinematography. Okay. And like the different angles and interesting, like establishing shots and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I feel like that's really this kind of the strength of this movie for being such a low budget movie. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I, <clears throat> so context first time watch for me, Really didn't know a whole lot because I've seen a ton of clips from the different Evil Dead movies. And obviously, like, I'm familiar with the character Ash and everything. And I've heard how the first one was meant to be, like, a serious horror movie. And then they just kind of leaned into the whole, like, um, crazy cheesy after that. Like, yeah, almost kind of comedy horror. Yeah, with um, Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness. Yeah, so I, I had heard that much, but, like, I really didn't know, like, how crazy it would be or anything. And so kind of a quick plug-in here at the beginning. I did notice how probably the first half, maybe even longer, because it's, like, what, an hour and 25 minutes long, maybe the first hour, it was quite serious. Like, yeah. Uh, it it did have that serious tone to it, but then it started going over the top and the over the top ridiculousness kind of did come across more funny than scary Mm -hmm. uh, in some of the cases. So that was kind of interesting because I really like also too, um, we've had little discussions about this. Um, Like I'm not completely anti it, but this is, I want to say this is the first possession movie. Um, yeah, we've done, and th- those those are the ones that I was like a hard no on when I was younger. Yeah, like it was just it was not my thing. Uh, and I know this is a normal possession thing, but it's like the closest thing to it. I didn't realize that's what the Evil Dead. Well, I thought it was just another zombie kind of movie thing. So it was kind of interest that was interesting to me because I didn't realize it was going to be something where, um, essentially the, uh undead or the dead whatever you want to refer to as uh mm-hmm. were, would talk to them yeah and so that that was totally on a, another kind of creep factor in it so yeah like the deadites are kind of like zombies but also kind of like just people pres- possessed by demons yeah what was the I description guess? again uh like the, what, what's it what are they called well, no, uh, Five Friends Travel released Flesh Possessing Demons. Yeah. yeah that's what it was. Yep. So. Yeah. Oh, I'll say, speaking of the Flesh p- Possessed Demons, or if you want to say it, the Deadites, uh, I thought the makeup was done pretty well, mm-hmm. especially for a low-budget movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would be that and the interesting camera angles you right from the get-go like when they're driving to the cabin we get some interesting shots like you know from the side going to the mirror and then like from the floor up and things like that Mm -hmm. where it's you know they were making it visually appealing even in kind of mundane uh scenes so yeah now, actually talking about the beginning, I kind of had a little bit of a question about that, and I don't know if you have mm-hmm. context to this or if I'm, like, reading way too much into it. <clears throat> I was a little confused with that whole little part where they were driving on the way there, and then, like, something was in the woods, and yeah. it kind of, like, went after them in the car and tried to cause an accident. Like, 
was that supposed uh, i interpreted it as that as it was supposed to be the whole like spirit possession the evil demon kind of stuff but also it didn't kind of make sense to me because they weren't at the cabin yet so this was just like out roaming randomly yeah i'm not sure okay <laughs> it's like this evil spirit was following him the whole time i guess yeah, well, I mean, that's part of the thing, too, where I was like, I feel like I'm reading too much into this, but I didn't know if, like, you had any co- uh, context I wasn't aware of, so. No. <laughs> I got nothing. Uh, um, I guess I, another thing I didn't realize is I didn't realize this was so early in the 80s. Mm. For some reason, I thought it was like a, like a mid-80s movie. Okay. But I think Evil Dead 2 was like... 1987 or something like that. Gotcha. Which I'll go on record saying I like Evil Dead 2 more than this one. Hmm. Might have to check it out sometime. Yeah, that one, it's kind of like a loosely a, a remake of um, the original, yes, from 1987. It's loosely a remake. Kind of similar stuff happens, but it leans more into the goofy and like over-the-top stuff. Like so like crazy amounts of blood and just ridiculous things happen. Do they bring back the original characters besides Ash or uh, I don't remember exactly. It's been a little while since I've seen it. Okay. I'm actually kind no, of curious. They've got like new characters, but it's all okay. set up the same. Like they go to the cabin and things start happening. Okay. Uh, yeah, my I it's piqued my curiosity, so honestly, I might watch that one on my own sometime soon just to like know what happens next so i think it might be on the um on the schedule somewhere okay i can't remember what month it's in uh, i'm pretty sure it's on there one thing to interject with i forgot to mention it when we were talking about cast at the beginning um but i had a note about halfway through this movie that um the character scott or scotty yeah totally made me think of uh a wish version of Harrison Ford. <laughs> I could see that. Like there was, there was one scene in particular. I think it was kind of a, one of those unique camera shots where like they were looking up from the floor or something like that. And I was yeah. just like, Holy smokes. He kind of looks like Harrison Ford from the eighties. So thought that was funny. Uh, Harrison Ford and Bruce Campbell in the same movie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll say Bruce Campbell is pretty good in this. Yeah. Is th- so? Is this the thing that really launched his career? Yeah. Okay. That's why I thought. But I well, didn't he know he grew sure. up like um, being friends with the Raimi brothers. Okay. Where they used to make movies together in high school, like mm-hmm. on Super Eight or something like that, just for like fun. Yeah. And um, it kind of just worked out where, uh, you know, Sam Raimi was more of like the director, Ted Raimi. You know, did some of the writing and some of like the um like the helping out and things like that. And then Bruce kind of became the actor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Bruce totally um I because I've seen him in a couple other things and obviously well, actually, you know what? Now I'm kind of curious. Like it was this technically his first thing? Yeah, it might be. Cause I was gonna say it's pretty um obvious that he got better with time oh he well he did some other stuff all really yeah this this character is a little duller in this one than he is in the other two movies where especially the third one i just had that in my notes i had bruce cable is always great it's like he's pretty good in this but i say he's awesome in evil dead 2 and an army of darkness and army of darkness he becomes almost like a an action hero or yeah, just spouting I, off one liners and <laughs> I've seen a couple of clips from Army of Darkness, so I totally know what you're talking about. Yeah, that would really lead heavily into the comedy. But I mean mm-hmm. Bruce Campbell's one of those guys that could really handle it, so it yeah. works pretty good. Um I think another thing this movie does pretty good is the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And just using a limited budget and a small cast pretty well. I mean, it's really only shot in what, like, maybe two locations, in the car, and in the cabin. <laughs> Basically, that's, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, 
Mm-hmm. Which I'm sure there was like more to it, like with sets and everything that they had to do. Yeah, honestly, uh, thinking about that too, um, how you touched on, you're touching on, you know, how small the cast is and kind of the minimal locations. It doesn't feel too much like it's forced, you know, like, yeah. oh, we're trying to be budget <clears throat> conscious. We're trying to, you know, be smart about this. It It did a good job. Like, even though there are probably plenty of other cabins they could have had that were bigger, that would have given them more space to work with or yada, yada, yada. Like, I I didn't really think about that at all during the movie. The best, I feel like the best way to do low budget horror is you got to pick the right areas to cut back in. Mm -hmm. Where with this one, you know, they had limited budget and limited settings uh, to shoot in. But they didn't cut the budget in the special effects, and yeah. The gore and everything. Like I feel like if you're gonna make a movie of this style, you gotta. Those are the most important things to lean into. Mm-hmm. And like yeah. I thought the music was pretty good too. It fit yeah. pretty well. I had that down. That uh, the music was uh, good, creepy, yeah, uh, a little corny here or there, but for the most part. Uh, totally fit in so um there's some uh crazy scenes in this movie too <laughs> the the first one i thought of was when the girl was um frantically drawing something on a paper mm-hmm. where she's like freaking out and she's like holding the pencil in like a stabbing motion yeah there's you know a stabbing pose or whatever and she's like carving into the paper because she's she's drawing the necronomicon the book of yeah. the dead yeah, we don't I find that see. out until later until they, you know, play that recording and everything. Mm-hmm. Which that recording cracked me up. It's like, okay, you started playing it and it was creepy. But then when the one girl turns into a deadite and you guys are listening to it again, <laughs> like, probably not what I would want to listen to. And one of my friends is like half dead and speaking in tongues and everything. Yeah. And trying to kill us. So here's a thought that I had too, because the first girl turned and then they locked her in the cellar and then the other girl turned and they chopped her up into pieces. Yeah. I was like, why don't you just kill the other one at this point? Right. Cause you know, there's no coming back. So like, just kill her and make it so that you don't have to worry about her anymore. Yeah. Scott freaks out with the ax. Mm hmm. Uh, I will say one of the most memorable scenes from the movie and maybe definitely not like a rewatchable scene is when um, uh, Cheryl hears a noise and she goes out in the woods to see what the noise was, which I mean, dumb idea to begin with. And you don't even tell your friends where you're going. (laughs) I just walk out in the middle of the night. I had uh, it in my notes. Rule number three of horror movies. Always explore by yourself. Yeah. (laughs) And she go yeah, so she goes outside to check it out, and then she gets like sexually assaulted by trees and vines. Yeah, I which had, is which is something that I always remember for this movie. I was because it's so ridiculous. Yeah, I was very confused by that because it was just like, I what, I I didn't, I thought I knew what was happening, and I was like, wait, maybe maybe I I don't know. Yeah, it was very. That that's uh that's a unique one right there. So yeah, the whole time I'm thinking like I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And like my wife is probably gonna walk in when I'm watching this and be like, "What in the hell are you watching?" Yeah, <laughs> but it didn't happen. <laughs> uh, but it's, it'd be hard to explain. Uh, well, this tr- these trees and these vines <laughs> are assaulting this woman, who yeah. Bill Cosby on them, <laughs> but. Well, yeah. I, yeah, well, that so okay. Now, this dives into kind of like another factor here, too. So, it's just like I didn't. Here's part of the thing that's going to be a little bit of a knock for me is like I didn't really understand how people, how or why people turned. Like, the first girl got assaulted, like we were just yeah. saying, and then she eventually turns. Um, because she didn't die, right? I don't think, technically. No, she just they're the she's the one they locked in the cellar. 
Yeah, she just um turned. But then the second girl got like a, a taken or killed and then brought back to life as possessed or something like that. Yeah. There's really no rhyme or reason to it, which I guess you know can add the suspense because you never know when it's gonna happen. Well, that was the whole thing too that was confusing me, where it's just like, why can't they just make Ash turn turn into one? Like there's no nothing that you can tell that is keeping them from <laughs> Right. Like why is he the one that doesn't get turned? Yeah, because uh, uh, there was at least one common strand with everyone, and it's just like they were attacked by something. Yeah, um, and injured or wounded or something like that, you know? Yeah, and then eventually Ash got wounded by the other possessed people. Yeah, like and, the girl was scratching his leg all up and everything. Yeah, and so it's just like, okay, is that like, does that count? Does that not count? So that that is kind of a little bit of a knock for me where – you don't have to have it spelled out, but also at the same time, you you need to have it make sense, though. Yeah, there's got to be some kind of rules to keep yeah. everything, like, grounded. Uh, now, now, if... Because there are horror movies that go the route of, like... um, uh, Well, I, I was actually talking to my coworkers today about uh, Bird Box. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was ever explained why some people just died and why some people could see it and then they were just kind of like in the control of them or whatever but mm -hmm. there was some consistency at least yeah like it, you had to have seen them and either choice one would be you would die or choice two would be like you'd be under their control or something yeah at least with like zombie movies where it's like okay you get bit you turned into a zombie yeah yep yeah exactly so that that's my uh one of one of my knocks on this movie but yeah yeah i would agree with that um another my knock is um how annoying linda is when she turns into a deadite uh which one was that is she the one that was she's the, the one that just cackles the whole time oh the one who's sitting down his girlfriend yeah yeah uh, bruce campbell's girlfriend and she just cackles the whole time with like this really annoying laugh. I think that was the second time I watched this movie. That was one of the things that made me almost want to turn the movie off. Yeah. And then when I watched it this time, I guess it didn't annoy me as much, but it was just like, God, that like constant laughing's annoying, which I mean, Bruce Campbell freaks out about because it's annoying. <laughs> He's telling her to shut up and he picks her up and like slaps her around. Yeah. I, um, I, had a note about that where it was creepy, but I also said that was kind of annoying. So yeah. it's kind of one of those things where they went a little bit further than they needed to. So um there are some weird continuity things in this movie too. Um towards the end there's this scene where Bruce Campbell's got like dirt on his face. Yeah. And then like he closes the door and then they show his face again and he does some of the dirt's missing. But then mm -hmm. it comes back later, <laughs> which I mean, that could easily happen in a low budget movie. Uh, and also when Cheryl gets put in the basement and he's like fighting her off, all of a sudden she turns really wrinkly and has gray hair. And yes. then she goes back to the way she was. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> like, OK. Um, probably another thing this movie is really known for is uh the blood mm -hmm. and it's you know it's pretty like you said there's really goes over the top parts where it's just so much blood and so much gore that it becomes comical um if you watch evil dead 2 you'll probably laugh because it's like this times 10 oh i bet like i kind of figured that's where they leaned into it yeah they're like, there's so many ridiculous scenes i feel like that one kind of leans more into like the having rules too okay yeah where, like, Bruce Campbell's in danger at one point of being possessed. I won't ruin any more for it, but uh, he takes care of the situation. <laughs> but uh, it's just been revoked. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, one thing I thought of watching this is when Ash and Cheryl uh, try to leave the cabin 
but all of a sudden the bridge is destroyed. I saw to Arnold and Drew lies. The bridge is out. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> that was like the first thing I thought of. Yeah, I um, there there were definitely some different unusual things with it. I mean, the, the, talking about that uh, time too is just like Ash gets out of the car and then he leaves her in the car, and it's just like, why are you going by yourself? Yeah. Uh, again mm-hmm. so but going back to when you were talking about with like uh the blood and special effects and everything it definitely there were a few things and i didn't uh write down specifically what they were but um they things were getting a little bit more corny than scary but one of them that de- definitely was um towards the end when basically ash was the only one left yeah um and there was a part where I think somebody's head got cut off or blown off and they fell on him and it was just like a bucket of blood basically like gushing out of the body onto his <laughs> yeah, face. He he lops off Linda's head with a sh- shovel. Yeah, that was it. Is what it is. Yeah. Because he was going to hack her up with a chainsaw and he decided not to. And he was going to go bury her because it was his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And he digs a grave puts her in her and then she comes back to life and comes at like that's when she like gouges up his leg and he gets the shovel and lops her head off yeah and then then her like headless body jumps on top of him starts like writhing on him (laughs) and blood just goes all over his face here's another thing too another uh i wouldn't call this a knock but this was an, an annoyance to me i don't care like I'm not going to be cold hearted. I love my family, but if I'm in a situation like this and people are dying, I'm not burying the body until the next day. <laughs> yes. I saw in your notes, <laughs> let's just throw the body outside and worry about it tomorrow. Yeah. Just screw that. Also. Now here's a knock though. That, that leads into another knock. I love how like apparently uh, Bruce Campbell, Ash, whichever we want to refer him to, was able to quote unquote secure the building by closing the doors, but the windows are all, all blown out. <laughs> yes. uh, who knows? It's Bruce Campbell. Uh, it was a low budget horror movie. So, <laughs> oh. oh, another kind of gore scene that made me cringe is when um, Linda. Uh, stabs the one girl in the ankle with a pencil. Mm, yeah. Oh, uh, that one was like brutal. Uh, one thing that was cool in conjunction with that is when um, she turned because of that. Again, like you had to be injured by them because uh, Linda didn't die or whoever got stabbed in the leg didn't die. Yeah. But then there was the scene where uh, Ash was looking at the wound and then it kind of like took her over. Yeah. So, and also, well, okay. That's another thing that goes in with the inconsistencies because Linda was possessed and then unpossessed and then possessed and unpossessed. Like that. Yeah. Was it's like the demon was playing head games or something with Ash to try to let the other one out. Yeah. So, I mean, p- part of that is intriguing because it's just like, oh, man, I was kind of tempted on saying he should just kill her. But if she's not possessed, like, he shouldn't kill her. Mm-hmm. But then she could become possessed again. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was definitely an interesting angle. Mm. Um. Oh, another thing I really liked was uh, after he takes the Necronomicon. And throws it in the fireplace, and all the deadites freeze. They just kind of like collapse to the floor, and they compl- rapidly like decompose, mm-hmm. and it's done in stop motion. <laughs> and okay. I love stop motion because it always looks great. Yeah, uh, I'm sure those scenes took longer to shoot than anything else in the movie. Oh yeah, that was any, probably where most of the money went. Yeah, any stop motion stuff always takes forever, but. Yeah, I always appreciate stop motion. Now it'd be all CG. Mm. But, oh, there's actually a a remake of Evil Dead. Yeah, when did it come out? 2013. Yeah, something like that. It's pretty good. Oh, okay. 
yeah, there's some different stuff that happens in it. That's got the creep factor turned up a little bit more than this one. I think that the horror movie genre is the best genre to do remakes in. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't know exactly why. Um, I, I think part of it is because it's, I don't want this to come off as a knock, but I kind of feel like the horror genre is not to be taken too serious most of the time. Mm -hmm. And so by people doing remakes, it's kind of paying homage, obviously to the original, but also just because of all the advancements over the past, you know, 20, 30 years or so from the original movies, heck 40 years or 50, even depending. Um, it's kind of just interesting to see a new take on it. So I'm not as bothered by remakes uh, for this. Now, if you're talking about remakes of all the other 50 billion things that they've done, like Point Break and some other dumb uh, yeah, stuff like that. Total Recall. Yeah. Robocop. It, it's kind of like, I don't know. It just, it bugs me. But horror movies doesn't. I may, maybe it's because I'm not as invested in horror movies as much as I am other things. Yeah. So... But they seem to be more successful, too. Yeah. When they're done right, they're pretty good. I like when they take the original story and then like add a twist to it. Mm -hmm. And then you got, you know, ones that either are shot-for-shot shot remakes and they fail, or they change too much in the story. It's a really weird balance Yeah, to getting it right. But, um, Man, anything else? You want me to get to the trivia and facts? I think I just got some stuff for my final thoughts when we do grades. So, yeah, you can right. uh, do facts and trivia. Yeah, being a, a low-budget movie that was really successful, uh, it's got a fair amount of stuff in it. Uh, so the cabin that was used as a film set uh, was also lodging for the 13 crew members with several people sleeping in the same room. Uh, the living conditions were terrible, and the crew uh, frequently argued. The cabin didn't have plumbing, so the actors uh, went days without showering and fell ill frequently to the, because of the freezing weather. Oh, uh, by the end of production, they were burning furniture to stay warm. Holy crap. What's, uh, was there information on what time of year and like what the temperatures were? Um, I don't have anything about that, but um, it was shot in Tennessee. I know that. Dang. Uh, at the end of principal shooting in Tennessee... Uh, the crew put together a little time capsule package and buried it inside the fireplace of the cabin uh, as a memento of the production to wh whomever would find it. Uh, the cabin has since been destroyed, and only the fireplace is still intact. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Campbell put up his uh, family's property in northern Michigan as collateral so that uh, Sam Raimi could... Or not only could finish the film, but also blow it up to 35 millimeter, which was required for theatrical release. I think uh, I heard that story. Yeah, Raimi was so grateful for Campbell's financial contribution that he um, credited it, him as a co-producer. Rock. Uh, after completing principal photography in the winter of 1979-1980, um, most of the actors left the production. However, there was still a bunch of film... Uh, to be completed, uh, most of the second half of the features, film features Bruce Campbell and various stand-ins, or what they call them as fake shemps. I saw that on the list. Yeah, to re to replace the actors who left. Hmm. Well, I mean, I guess that works because Ash was the only one who not was a dead eye. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, so at the end of a normal day of shooting, Bruce Campbell would return home in the back of a pickup truck because he was covered in fake blood from head to toe. <laughs> uh, the blood is a combination of caro syrup, non-dairy creamer, lots of red food coloring, and one drop of blue food coloring to darken it. Uh, at one point, Bruce Campbell's shirt uh, that he wears in the film was so saturated with fake blood that after drying it by the fire, the shirt became solidified and broke when he tried to put it on. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the director, Sam Raimi, and star Bruce Campbell were um, friends in high school, uh, where they made many Super 8 films together. They would often uh, collaborate with 
Sam's brother, Ted. Uh, Campbell became the actor of the group because he was, quote, uh, the only one girls wanted to look at. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Campbell was Campbell has played brief parts in cameos and most of Raimi's movies ever since. That's cool. Uh, so Sam Raimi was only 20 years old when he shot the movie. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, he originally wanted the title of the movie to be Book of the Dead, uh, but the producer, Irvin Shapiro, changed the title to The Evil Dead for the fear that kids would be turned off by seeing a movie with a literary reference. Uh, that's a fair point. Yeah. Uh, the film ran out of money about half, with only half of it completed in the winter of 1980. In order to complete it, uh, Sam Raimi, Rob Tappert, and Bruce Campbell did everything they could to complete the film uh, by taking out high-interest bank loans, borrowing money from friends and family, and even making cold calls to businesses around their hometown state of Michigan. Hmm. Uh, the calls worked, and they actually got uh, catering, gasoline, and other necessities um, that the cast and crew needed. Nice. Uh, the temperatures were so cold at the time of um, filming that the camera and other wiring froze, and they had to be thawed out by a fireplace inside the cabin. Oh my gosh. Yeah. One of the most intricate moments during editing was the stop motion sequence where the corpses melted, which took hours to cut properly. Or about. Yeah. Uh, most of the demon POVs that glide across the ground were shot by mounting a camera to a 2x4, while um, Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell ran along holding each um, either side. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, one of the first days of shooting during um, a, a scene shot on the bridge, the crew got lost in the woods. <laughs> yeah. uh, over his years as the director... Sam Raimi's 1973 Oldsmobile Delta 88 was actually a car that um, Raimi's father bought for the family when Sam was 14. Um, that car has played Ash's car in the Evil Dead movies, Uncle Ben and Aunt Mary's car in a Spider-Man movies, Annie's car in the movie The Gift, and Mrs. Ganoush's car from Drag Me to Hell. Uh, it has made cameos in nearly all of his other movies. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, the tape recorder found in the cabin actually belonged to Bruce Campbell's dad. Rock. And the last thing I got is this movie had a $350,000 budget, and it made $2.8 in the box office. Gosh, could you imagine, man? Right? <laughs> At 20 <laughs> years old? <laughs> well, Bruce Campbell had to be like 20, 21, something like that. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah, I, um... I watched a, one of the Joe Bob slash drive-ins. I think it was on um movie Maniac Cop that has has Bruce Campbell in it. And Joe Bob had Bruce Campbell on there and he was asking him questions about Evil Dead and and all that. And that, that's how I heard the story about him um putting his parents uh property up in up north in Michigan mm -hmm. <laughs> up so they could blow the film up and everything. Yeah. Uh, grades. Uh, IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes, what are they? I may have accidentally seen IMDb as a 7.4. It is a 7.4. Okay. Uh, Rotten Tomato uh, for the critic 88%. 86. Okay. Um, Audience probably higher because of the whole fall of oh, 95. Is it 84? What? Yeah. Hmm. I was a little surprised too. Uh, our grades. I guess I'll go first. Um, I guess I have a little more of a history with this movie. And the first two times I saw it, I was like, eh, whatever. And I never understood what people's fascination was with this movie. And this time around, I enjoyed it a lot more and I appreciated it for what it was. For being such a low-budget movie, there were so many things that were done well in it. Uh, I really liked the wacky camera angles and like the movements and everything they had. And just how resourceful they were making this movie. And I always just enjoy Bruce Campbell. He's always a um, super charismatic guy. And just like a 
straight funny guy. I mean, he's not doesn't really show much comedy in this one as he does in the later movies, but just a likable guy. Mm. And I, I like how his character is kind of hesitant and reserved at the beginning of this movie. And then when crap hits the fan, that's when he like takes over <laughs> and like fights with these deadites and everything to <laughs> take about. But I ended up falling on a four out of five this time around. Rock. Yeah. Yeah. I, so first time watch, um, it's, so there are definitely some things that are knocks against it, uh, from being like, you know, a five out of five, um, some things that were just kind of a little bit confusing, some inconsistencies. Um, the, the acting was pretty good. Uh, I, I do keep, um, in consideration, you know, low, low budget movie, what it was trying to accomplish. But one of the inconsistencies that I have down to that didn't really talk. Well, we touched on it, but the, uh, tug and pull of, is this a serious horror movie or is this a kind of a comedic horror movie? And I, I know what they were going for. Um, but that over the top factor that they were doing some of the times was definitely giving off more of those kind of like corny vibes. So it kind of competed a little bit. I don't think it was really like detrimental or anything, but it just, um, that along with some other inconsistencies and everything, uh, kind of dropped down the grade a little bit. I feel like four out of five is a uh, justifiable grade for it as well. So that's where I landed. Um, I mean, I could watch it again. Uh, they had some things that were really great, like the special effects and things like that. So, um, yeah, I I can totally see th- how this is a... Uh, this has a cult following and I'm interested in kind of what they did with the other ones. So rock. Yeah. Check the other ones out. I think army of darkness should probably like quite a bit. Rock. <laughs> Just because of how wacky the humor is and stuff. <laughs> um, and it's really not much of a horror movie. All right. So, um, next time we're going to be continuing on with, uh, the cult movie month. And we're going to be talking about Heather's, which is another movie I've seen. Uh, once before, but I don't remember too much about it because it was a while ago that I watched it. But um, if you guys are liking the show, please subscribe and share. Uh, follow us on social media. We're on pretty much every platform. Uh, check us out on YouTube and TikTok. We got a fair amount of stuff on there lately. And come by next week. We're going to be talking about Heathers. And until then, as always, be kind and rewind.